what's going on everybody it's not your average josh back here for another movie review and today i'm here to review the new movie infinity pool directed by brandon cronenberg but before i get into my review of this i do want to say i appreciate anyone who's watching this right now you can hit that subscribe button if this is your first time watching any of my videos you can hit that like button and that comment button as well you can follow me on tiktok you can add me on snapchat where i post content similar to this but for the most part my content will be here on this youtube not your average josh so again I appreciate all the support I do get, but let's get back into the review of Infinity Pool. As I said, Infinity Pool was directed by Brandon Cronenberg and written by him as well. You got Alexander Skarsgård in here as James Foster, and he is married to M. Foster, who is played by Cleopatra Coleman. You also have Thomas Kreshman in here as Detective Thresh, who I thought did a really good job. And of course, Mia Goth is in this movie as well as Gabby Bauer. Just Mia Goth alone in this movie, I think, officially cemented herself as one of the best actresses at playing a crazy girl. She is pretty wild in this movie. If you saw the movie Pearl last year, or even X, but definitely Pearl. She plays, um, a spoiler alert, a serial killer in that of sorts in a different time period. I thought she did a really good job playing the crazy girl in that, and in this, she's playing a different type of character overall, but still has those crazy elements where just yeah, if you haven't haven't seen this movie, yeah, just uh, be prepared for that for sure. Overall, I thought this movie was very interesting. I was very mixed on it when I got done watching it. Of course, with a name like Cronenberg, even though I have not seen any of uh, Brandon's other movies, of course, I do know the legendary David Cronenberg and. You know, if he's anything like his father, it's going to be some very interesting, crazy, wild, potentially divisive ideas in this movie. Just in terms of that aspect of having a wild, unexpected time at the theater, this movie delivered on that absolutely 100%. You have James and M. Foster who are enjoying an all-inclusive beach vacation in the fictional island of La Tolka. When a fatal accident exposes the resort's perverse subculture of hedonistic tourism, reckless violence, and surreal horrors ensue. And that description pretty much does, uh, in a nutshell, um, describe the overall big picture of this movie. But as I said, there's a lot of little ideas in this movie that are thrown in the mix here. You see this as kind of like, a, I don't know, baking a food or something it, with all the different ingredients here. You'll just get random ingredients thrown in throughout this movie that it sometimes worked for me sometimes i was caught a little off guard by and didn't know if i necessarily liked overall personally the direction it went you have james and m foster um on this vacation in this fictional island and it really starts out a fairly normal movie in the first you know 10 15 minutes you're just really with james and m you can tell there's a little bit of uh somewhat tension there between them you really get the the overall vibe and the um kind of outlook on their relationship and then once you get into the real crazy parts of this movie you have james and m going with a mia goss character and her uh, boyfriend of sorts i guess you call her boyfriend to a beach outside of the actual resort area you're not supposed to be doing this so you already got this secretive thing going on here they go to the beach they kind of get drunk a little bit you have, um, again, without spoiling anything, I don't want to spoil too much. It still has only been out for about a week, week and a half. Um, so I don't want to spoil too much or anything if you haven't seen it. But there is some interesting things that happen on this beach, I will say. And once one specific thing happens on this beach, I won't say what it is. But I will say, I don't know if I've seen it in a movie before, honestly. On the big screen, definitely. Maybe in some weird-ass streaming movie or movie that was released on DVD or something. There's, uh, and if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about on the beach. James Foster, he's using the restroom, and something ends up happening. I won't say um, what that is, but once that happened, I immediately was like, okay, this is going to be a weird movie. I can tell, like, that I have no idea where this is going to go. I did not expect at all what happened. And then from there, you have this sort of tragedy that happens. And then James and M are in a lot of trouble with the authorities there. And that's really where this movie kicks off. Things, as I said, just get really weird, kind of eyes wide shutty. And in some ways, there is some very psychedelic moments in this movie. There's some surrealism at times, especially in those psychedelic like moments. I'm just going to kind of hint at it a little bit here. For what James did to get out of being in jail, you see his mind ends up starting to change a little bit. And they have this whole concept here. And I'm going to go ahead and say it. This is a little minor spoiler here. But to get out of being in prison for the tragedy that happened, James ends up cloning himself. They have these cloning machines, I guess, in this country that you can use. And it'll clone your body. And they will actually execute the clone. So you, so the crime, it looked like it was paid for. And then so you can go back and stay at the resort and stuff. Because the way they explain it in the movie is that they don't want tourism to be affected. Once James first clones himself, 
then I thought there was, again, really interesting concepts in here, but then some that just didn't necessarily work for me overall. I really did love the idea where they never tell you for sure if James is still the real James or if he was the clone. That You get this kind of mental game going on where did he, did they switch him out? Because he just wakes up and he kind of has like concussion-like symptoms or just symptoms like he had been operated on and whatnot. I really do appreciate the visuals in this movie. They were very um, beautiful to look at, at times, beautiful and also terrifying in some of the certain different moments in this movie. But as you go further in this movie, I did again just continue to feel very mixed overall. The, the acting was all very well done in this movie, but I don't know. It, it, it's very, there's a lot of very just conceptual ideas here, very idealistic type movie, uh, like I said, surrealism here. You know, it's not a straightforward narrative. This movie, it, it, you, there is an overall plot and narrative that is going on, but it, it's, there's so much different ideas at play here. And I did find myself about three quarters of the way into this movie starting to wonder why is James uh, still involved with this? And again, you can go back to, oh, maybe that, I, that's the whole kind of um, concept, the whole kind of tension that this movie rides on is it did James get switched out? Is he the clone? And you start to see him turn into a sort of a rabid animal of sorts. And this movie just continues to go down this rabbit hole of James continuing to just, it seemed like he's changing as a person. And overall, I thought that was a very terrifying, interesting concept. But the way the movie does end, it, I don't know. I, 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 again, I was very mixed the way the movie ended, where you end up, again, there's a little spoilers here. There's a lot of crazy events that end up happening near the end of this movie where you think, okay, there's no way that this James Foster dude or any of these people are going to go back to regular life. Like, what are these people doing in regular life? And then you have this scene, which really is a microcosm of how I feel about this movie. You have this scene where all these crazy events have happened. James Foster's wife has already left like days earlier, maybe even a week earlier. And they all are just sitting on this bus train to go back to the, uh, the airport to go home, back to their prospective cities where they live. And everyone is having their own little conversations with themselves, with, the, you know, with their significant others. And they're all just having normal ass conversations. Like one of the couples that was involved in all this crazy shit that goes on um like so this eyes wide shut type shit they are all just like oh yeah the daughter's at home and oh yeah i hope she's doing good but she's not misbehaving and then you have you know me a goss character even talking to the dude like oh, what are you gonna do to get back home oh, we gotta go back to work you know that and it, they're just all having these regular conversations and part of me was like that that's really interesting kind of cool element they added to this where it's not just these people are just crazy all the time they this is their time to let out whatever they have you know built up you know bottled up this is their true selves are letting out i guess right now and I kind of like that in some respect, but then another way, I'm just like, I don't know, it just felt, so, it felt kind of weird to me. I don't know, just all these events that happened in this movie felt maybe more insignificant. I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it's just kind of what I felt. Overall, I really was just mixed. Every time there was something that I liked, the direction they were going, they ended up veering a little bit to the left or to the right. And sometimes I appreciate that and liked it and other times it, it kind of turned me off a little bit but again a Cronenberg movie that's really how I feel anytime I watch any type of Cronenberg content specifically David Cronenberg so his son makes sense that he has this type of this mind and I really appreciate the creativity here overall and I thought the concept was executed well to an extent it wasn't like it, it you know I'm very mixed on it there's lots of I really did like but in the end I'm still just kind of very mixed on it I don't know if I ever want to see the movie again if I'm being honest what this movie ends up leading to it, it doesn't make me want to oh go back for a second watch it's gonna be so different I feel like I'm still gonna have the same uh, basic experience that I had this time but um, that is my main thoughts. I would still recommend this movie. I think it, it's going to hit everybody different. The acting is very well done. I think the direction here is definitely on point with what the message that he's trying to get across, uh, Brandon Cronenberg, that is. Along with the writing, I think it's very hand-in-hand -in, -hand in sync here. Even just down to the cinematography, the location of this movie was very beautiful. Some of the imagery and some of these moments, the psychedelic moments, of, you know, psychedelic montages, some of the colors that are in this movie, there's a lot of beautiful art like picturesque uh, shots in this movie so on a technical aspect i think this movie is very well done all my negative aspects or i guess you call them negative is just personal reasons i didn't like where the story potentially went and th that's really where my main negatives lie mia goss continuing to show that she is a superstar actress like she is going to have a very long career if she chooses to do so she's such a good actress not just at being the crazy girl even though i said at the beginning you can tell just with how she goes about her work in each scene 
just watching it. She's a great actress. That's only going to get better, I assume. Alex Skarsgård, Alexander Skarsgård, he was really good in The Northman. I really did enjoy that movie. I thought he was really good in this movie as well. I think there's going to be some people that may not like his performance. There are some decisions his character makes that I don't agree with and I don't like. Very much on his wife's side overall. Just in terms of his acting, he really plays the part very well in this movie. He could have been very over the top at times. He overall, I think, just played his role about as well as you could. His wife, played by Cleopatra Coleman. Like I said, I was on her side the most in this movie she plays the person that is just the, the, the fish out of water almost in this situation even though it should have been her and her husband but she's just the whole time just like what is going on why are you acting this way why are you believing these people and starting to act like them and not wanting to leave this place and and, and you start to see her concern for her husband and why all of a sudden he's going down this this uh this hole a rabbit hole if you will the acting overall i thought was really well done in this movie but that's my main thoughts i'm going to give infinity pool a seven out of ten Interesting, wild experience. As I was very much expecting, uh, everything that I thought I was going to get out of this movie, I did overall for the most part. That's why it is around a 7 for me, even though it's mostly mixed for me, the overall movie experience. But that would be it for now. As I said in the beginning, hit that subscribe button if this is your first time watching any of my videos. I appreciate that very much. Leave a like, leave a comment. Do you agree or disagree with uh, my thoughts on this movie? All that support is very much appreciated. You can follow me on TikTok and add me on Snapchat where I post content similar to this. But for the most part, my content will be here on this YouTube, Not Your Average Josh. So again, I appreciate all the support I get. I'll be looking for more videos very soon, and I will talk to you guys later. Thank you.